use my 12 brush. See, it's got a nice milky white. I'm actually gonna paint white over this. So, I didn't wanna use a nude or a clear. I'm gonna use a milky white, so I'm gonna paint white over this after. I'm going for a taper look, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna wait for the pot to dry a little bit more before I start shaping it. I wanna taper, taper, taper. I don't want a coffin. If I wanted to coffin it, I would be bringing the sides a lot more, but I want to taper, so a nice taper. Do a 2B process, I can control that, that factor here. Once the powder goes more dry, I'm able to actually manipulate and sculpt it the way I want it. So, there's that. See that? Making my shape with the tips. You say you can't sculpt. And my model works so well with the chisel powder, guys. It's like perfect little, perfect beads. And the reason why I'm using a smaller brush, um, the 12 instead of my 14, is I want to have, have more control of the powder. Um, now that it's a little bit smaller, so I'll be able to get around the powder a little bit easier and have that nice control. Seal. Generally with this length, I really don't need that big of an apex. This is probably all I need right here. See that? Nice, natural, and really nice and straight. Ideally, that's what we're looking for. See that? Hello, Grin. Oh, for a second I thought it was no one in the live. There you go. Yeah, explaining the process is one thing, but you guys definitely have to practice to be able to execute. Because when I'm explaining, there's like things I'm doing are like muscle memory to me. So for a lot of you guys that are watching, it might look easy, but when you actually try to do it, it's not going to be that easy. That's why you definitely have to take some time to practice also, okay? You can't just... And the tip does everything for me. I, one of the biggest issues with, with, with nail techs that I spend too long doing sets, like four, 34 hours, you guys put the tips on, then you guys have to shape the tips. Generally, most of the time nowadays, when we have these tips, we don't have to actually shape the tips because the tips should already be shaped the way we wanted it, okay? So you're spending some uh, time on that that you really don't need or not necessary. I'm able to sculpt this tip to be the nice tapered shape that I want it. That's why doing two beading is definitely worth it because with two beading, you have to have more time to work with the powder, um, to control the powder. I can work on the cuticle area without worrying about the base of the nail. Control and powder manipulation is very important for their acrylic game. If you can't control the powder, you can't manipulate it, you're gonna run into a lot of issues, okay? And there you go, it's the same consistent apex every time. As long as you do the right application, the right amount. So with just two beads, I can do that. I don't really have to do any anything anything more than that. And a little bit. Right, put a little bit more powder right there in that spot right there. To dry it up a little too fast, maybe that's fine. Application process should be very nice and quick and easy and painless. It's just only the same technique over and over.
often I pop my monomer as a medium consistency. It doesn't really bleed out onto the nail. It kind of stays the shape, but also gives me time to work with it, which is why I like it. If you haven't tried my monomer, you should definitely try it. Definitely worth, worth it, okay? And I see the same thing over and over. Hey, watching from Mexico. Are you on vacation, Edgar? It must be, must be nice to be on vacation. <laughs> My monomer is already available for purchase. Um, Camilla is right in the pin link below if you need to purchase it. Um, it usually goes out of stock, but I think we just got back in stock like last week. So um, I'm gonna try to work on bigger sizes because a lot of people are just buying like multiple ones because they want a bigger size, but. I'm trying to up it to this, the 32 ounce and hopefully the gallon in the future. Um, I actually was worried about the gallon being an issue because of the shipping prices, but um, depending on how much shipping is, I probably can buy free shipping for anybody that purchased a gallon. I mean, I'll be willing to take the hit for that. <laughs> but we'll see how much the shipping is. Because on that site, if you purchase over $200, you get free shipping. So, I mean, when you got a gallon of monomer, it's probably around the same amount. And then you're, you can add some few things to make up for it, and you get the free shipping with that. And I think I'm going to have to look into how much shipping a gallon of monomer would cost. Because remember, it goes by weight also. I mean, all my students, I mean, I guess most of my monomer is being purchased by my students, if you think about it. Um, <laughs> every student that I really teach, they are using my monomer, so that's why it's consistently going out of stock, because they stay busy. So, I mean, that, that's, I guess that's one reason why my monomer is always out of stock, because my students are constantly buying it. And I've taught over hundreds of students, so if you think about that, um, if they're staying busy, they're going through mine more like nothing. Is that consistently every time? South Africa, welcome. The application, thank you, Edgar. I'm watching the UK, love your application. Hope to be as good as you someday. No, I hope you'd be better than me someday. Hey, CC, how are you? Just got mail, mine in the middle of the day. Can't wait to use it. Hey, Nicole Gray, let me know. What's up, Raymond? Uh, Nicole, let me know what you think. Hey, CC, and Kiera. Let me know what you think. Will you be purchasing the supply class? Um, yes, uh, Daisy. Uh, you will, you're in the master class, right, Daisy? In Chicago. Um, I will have my um, monomer. You'll be able to use my monomer there, but I don't know about purchasing it. Um, plus, we're not going to be doing a lot of application. I will be showing you guys more of uh, acrylic designs when we go to the master class. Um, the master class, we're going to assume that all the students already know how to do acrylic. So we're going to show, I'm going to do some quartz um, designs, some really fun encapsulation, advanced uh, encapsulation designs for you guys um, to show you guys that. Um, I mean, you're in the master class, Daisy. So I, I believe you're in the master class, right, Daisy? Um, that's going to be a class where you're learning a lot of advanced techniques and designs. And there's a lot of really cool designs that I want to show using acrylics that, you know, uh, yes, you can use gel polish, gel art paint, but sometimes a lot of a lot of people like to use acrylic still. So I'll be able to show you some really really cool designs, give you like a lot of structure and and also also we'll be demoing uh, the way how I advocate, and then you can yes, and I'm gonna always help you with that. What we're not gonna do is gonna have to sit there and, and practice how to do application. We're gonna assume that you already know how to do application. We're just gonna show you new techniques on how to advocate, and you should be able to take on that technique right away given that you're taking a master class, so you definitely should have that ability already. And um, we're gonna definitely expect a lot from the students from that class. That class is almost half full. We haven't even announced it yet publicly, to be honest. Um, that we have no flyer. Once we lock the flyer, it's gonna be locked up. That's gonna be back in Chicago. And there you guys go. Um, consistency every time. Look at the application, cuticle flushness. You zoom in on the cuticle, you see that we don't want to do a lot of work, right? And consistency with the fingers every time every finger is the same that means that my ratio how I pick my bead is consistently the same every finger that's how you be able to get the application very fast very fluid 
I'm getting your control and your everything down. Soon I have my baby will come another class. Okay. <laughs> okay, Susie. No problem. Don't rush that baby. That's what I want to show you guys that consistency because I can do pretty much every finger the same every time. No matter what. As long as I have control of my powder, my monomer, understanding, I'll be able to be good to go. I want to say arguably my monomer is the one of the best monomer out in the market if you haven't used it yet. I mean, I think, I think my warehouse ships out like maybe 20, 30 a day. That's like a, the minimum. I'm like consistently reordering, restocking. It's good to, now to get take advantage of it because when my armor prices go up, that's gonna go up. Right now, I'm locked in the deal. Whatever batch I buy, and it was at the right price, then I sell that price. But if they go up in price because of raw materials, which happens, I love these tips. I'm not gonna lie with you guys. It gives me this nice tapered look. Look at that. Given like these tips are kind of like coffin, if you want to do coffin, you guys are bringing in more, but if you kind of sculpt out, it gives it a really nice tapered look. A lot of people want to get those wide, um, a lot, some people get like really wide tips and they want to get that nice boxy look, but I can still get that same look, you know, with these nice um, coffin natural tips. It has a natural curve to it. That's the one thing that I really like about it because it has a natural curve to it on um, these tips. Sometimes it's too straight, it's hard for you to, to get the uh, apex down, if you know what I mean. Um, if it has a natural curve, if I, as long as I do my application nice and smooth and even, that means that the apex is gonna be naturally there, which is, you cannot beat that. I mean, with a straight tip, yes, it's gonna look nice and boxy, good, but you're gonna run into issues where the apex is not gonna be what you want it. You know, it's gonna be, you have to build it more. They didn't have the Irish, but they had the vanilla, and I put the cream donuts on it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, see, it has a natural with this, with this, with the these tips. Um, it has a natural curve to it. So as long as your application is smooth, you have a very natural um, what you call it, apex already. I really don't ever build apex when I do my 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 application. I don't even think about it, to be honest with you. I just do the same application I do over and over and over, and my apex is just there. This is the way I do my advocate. Even my students that learn my technique and they, they, they work in class, they're like, oh, wow. I'm over here thinking about uh, apex. I'm like, yeah, you don't think about it. It's one of the biggest problems that nail techs come to this industry. It's the first thing, because it gets talked about so much. Every time you see anything, any post on the internet about any breaks or, or anything, is when it's always apex is apex that. You know, like, and then it gives this mentality where, oh, I have to focus on my apex. Then when the moment you start thinking about too much about apex, you start forgetting about your application. Then before you know it, you got this big bulge in the front on the top of your nail. Yeah, you got a big apex, but that does not look good. It's out of place. It's just too much. You're just skipping too fast forward. So that's why I teach application only. I teach control, manipulation. I know that my students, as long as they're able to control, manipulate, understand the powder, Apex just an afterthought. I know I promised to announce the um, salon ready courses of the states, but I just haven't had the time. I'm finishing up some products, some new products for you guys, and then I'm gonna announce the next rotation of classes. Plus, it's during the holiday too, so it's like really rough for me to pick dates. But man, I love application. Once you get it down and it's nice and smooth, you can't really complain. It's just it's gonna be so fast for me to get done with the set. Application time is going down big time. You guys, oh, thank you, Alicia. <laughs> Any of those tips in the color, please. Um, the tips are the natural, uh, these are the natural tips. Um, they're slightly curved, and then the, the color is a uh, chisel 121, is the, their milky white. 
um, you have to DM me for class details. Um, I, whenever I announce my classes, I'll always pin it at the top of either Nada Studios page or my personal page. If a lot of you guys are following both, uh, hopefully you're following both. But um, if uh, my Instagram is currently down, so that's my backup that has pinned there. Um, my main Instagram's down, so I know there's a lot of students just looking for me still. Uh, when I announce the class, it'll be pinned at the top of all my social media. And you guys can just be able to DM me then. So once I announce the class, I have like a kind of a welcome packet, like, and I just send it, so I don't have to like send it to everybody. And plus, it's easier for me to know when people DM me when I announce the class, so I don't forget about it. Just case you DM me and then you're like, oh, I want to be in the class, and I didn't know, okay, and then by the time I announce it, it's like, I forget about it because I have so many DMs per day. And then like, you know, the seat's filled up and someone doesn't get in. So I just recommend that when you're interested in class, I'll announce the date and time and location and you can DM me then because at that point, you know, I'll be able to keep putting you in a group right away, a student group. I may think about an early October class. I wanted to do like a poll or something on my page to see where people would be interested in a salon ready class. My salon ready class was a big success. I can't wait to do another one of those. I, to see the students be able to just, oof. A lot of people have been requesting that. This is a little bit too much powder, but I'm gonna place it just a little bit higher. So, anytime I have excess in powder, I just place it a little bit higher so it has more time to travel to the nail until it's not too bulky. I never removed the powder until I was ready to be moved, it's in like an al dente state. God, that taper look just so nice. Yeah, see how I don't rush through my application, but I finish actually pretty fast, right? People want to rush. Um, with my monomer is medium setting, so the monomer does not really, um, it's not really runny, it's, it says medium, see? It won't bleed, but then I'm able to work with it. And this gives me the ability to be precise with my application. It means I'm able to get her all the way up to the cuticle area. Come on, like, let's be honest. Why put a really runny bead on and then try to lead it down the nails, all runny, all that, all that stuff? Well, you can just control Look at that. Get all that cuticle area and precise precision shapes already there. My application probably this live, I probably finished what, in maybe 20 minutes tops. We're at the 20 minute mark probably um, with application alone for a medium long set. Maybe even lower, maybe it's 15, but I mean, I've been talking and stuff and guiding yes through this. So if I were to do this without like having to live stream, it's probably gonna be like 10 minutes. So that the ideal time for your application should be 10 to 15 minutes. Once you hit the mastery level, you can do any set, any application in 10 to 15 minutes. That means that it's like a minute of finger. If you think about it, I only spend like what may probably like 30 seconds per finger, not even a minute. And that's possible because I don't have to worry about bringing up too much powder. Every, every nail I've done has been too beaded. I never had to bring up any more powder. I didn't have to uh, take off any too, you know, any mud. I didn't have to worry about powder bleeding. Uh, I just put enough powder, control the powder, put it where it's needed, and then I move on. So less than a minute per finger and I'm good to go. I probably spend more time cleaning my brush, if anything. So I got a little bit of acrylic in here. It's a great brush, but at the end of the day, we gotta make, if you, you have acrylic stuck in your brush while you're working, that's okay. Because this acrylic been in monomer, so it's not going to be dried. So you take this opportunity to clean it out. Make sure your brush is not, I mean, my brush is a nice Glinsky brush, but it does take a beating. And if I don't clean it properly, 
it, it will definitely go bad. And the best way to do it is you can just feather through and you'll feel the acrylic. You can't just look in the outside, okay? Sometimes the outside look clean, but the inside not clean. That's when you run the issues where you let it 